it's time for its episodes with quick tips you should know techniques you can implement into your workflow right here on a tale a tale oh yeah a tale of two hygienists all right welcome listeners to this week's tip episode look we're at the ada SmileCon in houston this year and i have with me erica flateau who you guys have heard on other shows and we need to record a tip episode. And I said, let's do it. Let's wing it. So, <laughs> Winging it. Look, I'll probably do an intro for this later on and actually inform you of what we're going to talk about. But right now, I can't tell you that. So, Erica, one of the things that I did definitely want to talk about was there's a lot of misinformation going out there on everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And we talked about it a little bit earlier with Dr. Pam on the podcast. If you guys haven't um, seen that, well... I'm trying to think of where you're going to see that because I think it might come out as a bonus episode or it might come out in a couple of weeks. I'm not really sure when that's going to come out, but it was a live recording here at SmileCon in the the podcast and Influencer Hub. But we talked a little bit about, you know, the perio percentages and some of the, kind of some of the codes. One of the things I keep seeing all the time and I keep hearing people talk about all the time is doing a debridement or using the debridement code. Yes. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Okay. Let me ask, so when you first started practicing, did you ever use that code? Never. Okay, have you since? Oh, yes. Okay, tell me in which way that you guys use it. Well, it's very useful, particularly with new patients. It can be for, obviously, an established patient that's that's overdue, but if you read the CDT, it says, and of course I'm paraphrasing, but it says that you are doing this to facilitate an exam. That yes. means there's so much plaque in calculus that the doctor cannot possibly be thorough or effective. So your job as a hygienist is say you've had them in the chair, you've done the new patient interview, you take an FMX, and then you take a look in their mouth and you go, I can't even probe today. And you're not supposed to probe with a mm-hmm. debridement. So you go ahead and you remove as much as you can so that a thorough exam could be done and mm-hmm. a little bit of resolution. Now you don't want to do a bunch of healing over subgingival calculus, but you want to provide pretty cleaned up field. And so then you have them back for that 150 or 180 so that the doctor can be... Which uh, is a comprehensive exam or comprehensive perio exam. And you can have a real thorough examination, but then also the hygienist then can do accurate probing Mm -hmm. and then decide if we're going down the scaling and root planning route or if we're, you know, if we're dealing with somebody that's, you know, really got pretty good bone and we just had a lot of inflammation. Now, there's also... A lot of talk about the scaling in the in the presence of inflammation code that's that's newer that's very rarely the front desk sometimes will give you a little pushback on that one because there's there's there the insurance companies are getting up on you know covering that but sure. again we don't let the insurance companies dictate what we do and we have to you know call it what it is but the debridement code I have found to be very useful and make a lot of sense with with people that are overdue. You, you nailed it. And this is the thing. This is why we're having you on the show. Um, it's, and it's almost like we practiced that, by the way, because that was exactly <laughs> the answer I was hoping you were going to give. But I wasn't, I don't know you that well, so I'm trying we to get this out. We might not agree. <laughs> but no, that's exactly what it is. And I feel like, um, you know, I just saw the other day that someone said, no, you can do it as like a pre-cleaning. Like you're, I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's old school thinking. Like this is, you know, you can do this and then a debridement and then this and this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. But I also didn't feel like it was my place to tell them. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I'll let other people tell them that. <laughs> okay. So then let's talk about the 4346, the, the, the scaling in the presence of moderate to severe gingivitis, right? Right. Which, by the way, is a perio code. It's a, in the 4000s. So I'm like, okay. Well, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah. I don't Why really, is it in the 4000s? It, it confuses me because I, I know it's not a preventative procedure, but it's mm-hmm. also not really saying that this patient is in a periodontal category. Right. So are we calling inflammation perio? And so I was But it's therapeutic in nature. True. That's true. So it, it, it's, I, I guess I have to put more thought into this one. And I don't know the, the CDT codes well enough to know if there's like an actual category for therapy that's not perio, but also <laughs> gingivitis. Like there, there's not like a 2000s code that's just for right. gingivitis stuff, I don't think. So um, yeah, so you're right. It is a little bit of a misnomer there. Mm-hmm. So when do you use 4346, assuming that insurance isn't an issue? Mm-hmm. You know, I 
I'll be honest with you, I don't use it a lot. And it's it's because I feel as though, you know, well, there's a lot of offices, obviously, that, that will do a scaling root planning on a patient's got four millimeter pseudo pockets and great bone. And, and I just don't do that. No. And so I, that's why debridement is honestly one of my favorite codes. And I will, or if the person's been a routine patient and they truly isn't bone loss, I will just increase their profi recare interval. Uh, if the person uh, with, uh, I'll just have them back for another profi. I will ca- continue to call a profi, have them on a three month profi. But if they truly are, you know, the, uh, I can see on the x-rays of 30% bone loss and, and we, a lot of recession, we need to be, uh, for patient involvement, we really need to be addressing them periodontally. Yep. Even if they're an established patient and they're on a perio maintenance, I'll have them back through some isolated SRP mm-hmm. as part of maintenance. Which is, yeah, I mean, it's included in the code. So, mm-hmm. My my pushback on what you just said, though, mm-hmm. is the three-month profi mm-hmm. thing. Right. I don't get it. I understand. I guess it's because this is a person that truly just gets a lot of stain or calculus, uh, superficially. Okay. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at the, at the bone on the x-ray, and I just can't categorize this person uh, for the rest of their life as a periodontal patient. Now, does perio exist in 85% of us over age 40? Yes, in one sh- you know, form or another. Mm-hmm. So I am a big person about perio conversion. But there sure. are those isolated patients that can remain a profi. All right. So this is the, the last question, I think, for this episode. So I want you to walk me through... That patient that still hasn't been back since COVID mm-hmm. was historically a six-month profi situation, has progressed now into perio. How do you have a conversation with them that says, hey, look, things have gotten worse and we need to do more, but mm-hmm. their whole life they've never experienced it. How do you, how do you talk to them about that? Well, um, th- we have our tools that are very helpful as a hygienist. We have our camera, we have our perio chart, and we have our FMX. So putting, taking the time to put those images up on the screen and show them the bone, show them that maybe you have radiographic calculus, um, giving them some visuals so that they're going to be their own dental expert and advocate for themselves because truly it's a partnership. And then explaining in lay terms you know, this is what I'm seeing today. Hey, you know, we can't do anything about the last two years. It is what it is. And I, as much as I hate that saying, um, I, we can't do anything about it. We can't look in the rear view mirror. But going forward together today, I have some concerns. And, you know, we can do this. And mm-hmm. But this is this is what I'm seeing and what I'm finding. So say they've been a profi all these years, but now it's been two years. And they're, they're definitely in need of scaling and root planning. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just going to be the conversation about... In my professional opinion, now this is a person that knows me, I'm assuming. Sure, sure, it's sure. not a brand new patient to me. I've seen you before and there's been changes and these numbers are telling me that I'm not properly taking care of you if I just clean you up, polish your teeth and let you go home and this is why. And if we if we can do this together, we can get you back on track and we're not going to do it all in one day. Mm-hmm. And we're make, you know we're essentially making up for say they were a six month or four cleanings. I'll say it because they can they can wrap their head around that and they go yeah. oh yeah. So how are you going to in one hour, you know accomplish four cleanings? Yeah. Maybe they really needed twelve, but you know. And so we're going to have you back. We're going to keep you comfortable. I'm going to do some really focused, detailed. I don't like deep cleaning. We do some focused, detailed cleaning on these areas I'm concerned about, and things are going to be okay. But there's just going to be a few things I'm going to need from you, and we'll talk about home care and coming in for these appointments. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you know, I can't do it without you. And when you ask someone for help, they, they usually respond positive. They always do, honestly. I haven't had anybody ever say no to this kind of conversation, but it, it takes time. And maybe that appointment, you're doing a lot of talking rather than a lot of scaling. Yeah, no. And I think, that, and we've talked about that on the podcast before, like there's such, there has to be a give and take in communication with our patients. We can't just be jumping right into the procedures. I was at Perio Protect conference uh, just last week, well, as when we're recording this, and there was a graph that was up there about how much time is for scaling, and it really was almost a quarter of the appointment was only scaling. Everything else is diagnostic and conversation, and it was really, really, really well received with a, a largely hygiene audience. So anyway, if you're looking for coaching, Erica does some coaching with some offices. If you're a hygienist and you're like, hey, look, I just need help with verbiage, or hey, my whole office needs help with this, make sure that you guys reach out to her. Where can they find you? Uh, well, Erica Flateau at gmail.com. And that's F-L-A-T-E-A-U or RenewConsultingServices.com. And those will be in the show notes so you guys can check them out. Thanks, Erica. Thank you. 
tale of two hygienists.